God. In Psalm 10 verse 16, Psalm 10 verse 16, the Lord is king forever. Not only for in the past, not only even now, but forever. The Lord is king forever and ever. And the heathen uh, are perished out of his land. In uh, Psalm 47, I'm reading from verse 2. Psalm 47. We're looking at verse 2. Psalm 47, verse 2. For the Lord most high is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. A great king over all the earth. Not only over Israel. You know there are some people that will say, this kind of religion, this is white man's religion. This is the religion of the Jews. No, it says he is a great king over all the earth. It tells us in verse 7, for the Lord, God is king, is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. God reigneth over the heathen. Not only over the Jews, he reigneth over the heathen. God seated upon the throne of his holiness. The princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abraham, for the shields of the earth belong unto God. He is greatly exalted. Thank God is our God. He's our Lord. And he is our Savior. He's the one we are praying to. And he has all the power, the ability to answer our prayer. Nothing shall be difficult. Nothing shall be too hard for him. In Psalm 145 verse 10. Psalm 145. We're looking at verse 10. All thy words shall praise thee, O Lord. And I say shall bless thee, and they shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom, and talk of thy power, to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. In Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4, we're looking at the majesty of our God, at the glory of our God, at the exaltation of his holy name, and at the power and the kingdom that belongs to our God. Daniel chapter 4, we're looking at verse 25. Daniel 4 verse 25. That they shall drive thee, talking about Nebuchadnezzar, from men. And thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. And they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen. And they shall, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven seven times. And seven times shall pass over thee. Till thou know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men. And giveth thee, giveth thee to whomsoever he will. In verse 34. Now we have the testimony and the confession of Nebuchadnezzar himself. As he said. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion. And his kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven. And among the inhabitants of the earth, none can stay. He signed or say unto him, What doest thou? This is the God of all majesty and honor and glory. He is our Father. And when we pray to him, nothing can hinder that prayer from coming through. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 17. Talking about this God. And we should know who our Father is. Who our God is. His majesty. His honor. His glory. His power. His kingdom. His ability to do all things in our lives. In First Timothy chapter 1 verse 17. Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And in 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 15, chapter 6 verse 15, which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who only has immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man has seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Yeah. Amen. 
And now we're told in Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5, reading from verse 13. Revelation 5, verse 13. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, had I seen blessing, and honor, and glory, and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Chapter 19, verses 1 and 4. Revelation chapter 19 verse 1 And after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. In verse 4, and the four and the, and the, and the twenty elders and the four bees fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne saying, Amen, Alleluia. You see this Lord's Prayer, as it turns up, it's telling us about God. And this, our God, is a great God. God is the eternal, independent, and self-existent being, whose purposes and actions spring from himself. He is absolute in dominion. He is most pure, most mighty, and powerful, infinitely benevolent and beneficent. And it says it's true and holy. The creator and upholder of all things is infinitely happy, infinitely perfect, and eternally self-sufficient, illimitable in his immensity and indescribable in his essence. He is known fully only to himself. He is infinite in wisdom. He cannot err. He cannot be deceived. And from his infinite goodness, he can do nothing but what is eternal and just and right and kind. That quotation is from Madame Clark, a holiness preacher who has a wonderful commentary. And this God that the Bible describes this way is our God. I want to say he is my God. He is my God. And he is my father. He is my father. And you know, when we pray to him, he will answer that prayer in Jesus' name. Yeah. Come back to Matthew chapter 6. Now we're looking at him from verse 9. After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us when this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Whenever we pray and then we say amen, that final amen we always put to start with when Jesus taught this prayer, he put an amen there, which teaches us that whenever we pray, at the end of that prayer, we must have that amen. But the question is, what's the meaning of that amen? In First Kings chapter 1, First Kings chapter 1, I'm looking at verse 36. You know, many people just say amen without knowing what it means. What does it mean? In First Kings chapter 1, looking at verse 36, And Beniah the son of Jehoiada answered the king and said, Amen, the Lord God of my, of my Lord the king say so too. Amen, the Lord God. God of the king, my Lord, says so to you. It means after the preacher had prayed, after the pastor had prayed, after our leaders had prayed, or after you have prayed, and then you have said this, 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 and this, you are making some requests, and then after all those requests, you now say amen. The meaning is the Lord God confirm it. The Lord himself said the same thing, says so to you. Jeremiah chapter 28, I'm reading from verse 6. Jeremiah 28, and we're looking at verse 6, the meaning of that word, amen. Jeremiah 28, verse 6, and even the prophet Jeremiah said, amen, the Lord do so. You see that, that's the meaning of amen, amen, the Lord do so. The Lord perform the words which thou hast prophesied. That's the meaning of amen. Whenever you pray and you have that final amen, you can go, you can go home with joy because the answer is coming. Yeah. 
you can go home with happiness because now you're sure with that final amen you know one person saying amen two people saying amen 200 saying amen 2000 saying amen to your prayer there's no doubt god has answered your prayer before we pray why don't you pray this with me after me now our father which art in heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. Lead us not into temptation. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the glory. Forever. Amen. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. God has answered our prayer already. You will not perish in this world. And the temptation of this world will not drown you and defeat you in Jesus' name. He will deliver you from all evil. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. This is a prayer every child of God ought to pray. This is a prayer every child of God ought to lift up your heart, your mind, your will, your heart unto the Lord. There are temptations in this world. Enticement to evil. Enticement to sin. Enticement to rebellion. Enticement to iniquity. Enticement to transgression in this world. That's why you are praying to the Lord, oh Lord, I want to follow you till the end. I want to follow you till the end. Lead us not into temptation. Make sure your sins are forgiven first. Make sure you have salvation first. Make sure the Spirit of God is bearing witness in your heart. You are born again. Make sure the Lord has given you the victory. There is no condemnation now to them. That walk in the Spirit and not in the flesh. No sin. No rebellion. No disobedience. No transgression. No iniquity, no condemnation, no guilt, no evil. You are still from evil. You say, Lord, I want to serve you. And I want to serve you with all my strength, all my life. I consecrate everything to the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness. Thank you, Lord, for the cleansing. The cleansing of the blood of the Lamb. Thank you for the price that you paid for my salvation. Now you pray after that assurance of salvation. Now you pray after that assurance that the sins are forgiven. Now you pray after that redemption. Lead us not into temptation. What are the peculiar temptations that are coming your way? What are the peculiar temptations you have fallen into in the past? Now you are praying to the Lord. O oh Lord, lead us not into temptation. Lead us not into temptation. Lead us not into temptation. Where is the temptation coming from? Is it coming from your flesh? Is it coming from your mind? Is he coming from your neighborhood? Is he coming from friends? Is the temptation coming from fellow workers? Where's the temptation coming from? You tell the Lord, oh Lord, I want to live the victorious life. I want to live the overcoming life. Lead us not into temptation. Is the temptation coming from men? Is the temptation coming from women? Is the temptation coming from enemies? Is the temptation coming from sinners? Is the temptation coming from so-called church members? Lead us not into temptation. That's why you ought to pray. And the Lord will show you a way of escape. 
that you will be able to escape that temptation. The Lord will show you a way of escape that you'll be able to escape that temptation and then be able to live the victorious life, the overcoming life, the triumphant life, the conquering life. That the devil with all his strategy, all his wiles, all his plan, all his agents will not be able to draw you back, back into sin. You are praying, you are telling the Lord you don't want to backslide. And you don't want lying wonders, deceptive miracles, evil workers to lead you back into any temptation. You are saying, oh Lord, lead us not into temptation. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. And if you really mean that, then you are going to get rid of the roots of evil in your life. The love of money. The love of money. The love of money. The roots of all evil. Pray that the Lord will approach that away from you. That's what is hindering many people from living the righteous life, the holy life, the overcoming life, the victorious life. Tell the Lord that your root uproot that sin away from you. That you'll take the root of evil away from you. I promise the Lord you are going to abstain from every appearance of evil. Abstain, abstain, abstain. From every appearance of evil. Don't wait until somebody tells you. Just abstain. Just say, I'm making up my mind. I'm making up my mind. To abstain from every appearance of evil. Evil language. Evil literature. Evil companionship, evil association, evil transaction. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Don't allow the devil to inject an evil heart of unbelief in you, planning to depart from the living God. Don't allow an evil conscience to remain in your heart, in your life. Tell the Lord, wash me, cleanse me, purge me with the blood of the Lamb. From the evil conscience, abhor that which is evil, hate that which is evil, reject that which is evil. Throw it away, that evil sin. Beware of evil workers. Workers of evil, they that walk in iniquity, just want to introduce false doctrine. The dreamer of dreams, drive them away from yourself. The prophets of false, drive them away. Those false teachers, teachers of false doctrine, drive them away. Don't ever get united with those who are false doctrine. Don't allow the devil to cajole you, deceive you into uniting with evil people. Will give you a lot of reasons. You have a lot of gain. Your church will grow. This will happen. That will happen. In trying to make you unite with teachers of false doctrine. But if you are praying, deliver us from evil, then you have to make an effort yourself to be free from that evil yourself. And you count those false teachers as dead. Those false prophets as dead. They might be your relative. But it won't be your husband, your wife. Get them away. From you when it comes to religion. I've nothing to do with their false doctrine.